Hi guys, it is a hot, sticky, miserable, late September day, a mid-July day here in late September. That would be Tuesday, September 25th, here in the end times in Garfield, Texas, about with the heat index, about 100 degrees pretty much outside today. So I am in the middle of hiding out in my room in front of my air conditioner for the afternoon, playing around with my new camera. Uh, you might notice actually an improvement in the video quality, and we'll see if this is going to be a new feature on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. So anyway, guys, I am uh, figuring this out. So what I'm doing is testing the battery life. So I'm going to crank up part two of today's Doomer headlines going on the mainstream or starting off on the not so mainstream media to see how this planet is going to hell this week with no help from climate change and if the battery runs out in the middle of this rant well at least I'll know how long the battery lasts but I ain't going to start it over uh, so anyway little dog you're going to have to go back over there I'm going to trade the little dog in for a we are so fuck sign and we're going to start out not on the mainstream media, but to see what my old buddy Robert Hunziker over there at Counterpunch, what his rant is about this week. You know, I, I, it must be fun to write for Counterpunch, fearless muckraking since 1993. I should start writing for them too. So uh, Robert's talking about homespun terrorism this week, and you can take a wild guess who the homespun terrorists are, talking about eco-terrorists, that would be, of course, the Donald Trump administration. Particularly, he's looking at the Environmental Protection Agency. Yes, uh, if, you, if you want to find a bunch of, of terrorists, uh, eco-terrorists terrorizing what's left of the environment, there's no better place to start than the Environmental Protection Agency, which has become a complete, absolute total joke. And this is what Robert is talking about. Uh, in particular, uh, the Trump administration, this is quote, he's actually quoting uh, a New York Times article. If you don't want to believe uh, Robert and Counterpunch, this is the New York Times. Uh, Eric Lipton, uh, right from the article, the chemical industry scores a big win at the EPA. Quote, the Trump administration, after heavy lobbying by the chemical industry, is now scaling back the way the federal government determines health and safety risks associated with the most dangerous chemicals on the market. No shit, and then Robert uh, breaks down what that means and what it means, guys. Anyway, there's a lot on the list here. As I say, I don't have time to get very deep into any of these and hopefully the battery will last. Okay, so when was it? A few days ago, the Trump administration as we've been waiting for the State Department green lighting the Keystone XL pipeline as part of Donald Trump administration plan to destroy the planet and here we see wow from Associated Press Keystone developer plans to start construction in 2019 the developer of the Keystone XL oil pipeline plans to start construction next year after a U.S. State Department review ordered by a federal judge concluded that major environmental damage from a leak is unlikely and could quickly be mitigated. All right, TransCanada spokesman Matthew John said the company remains committed to moving ahead with its project. The company has already started preparing pipe yards, transporting pipe, 
and mowing parts of the projects right away in Montana and South Dakota. Yep, yep, yep. Which, of course, leads us into this next article. Uh, this no shit Sherlock article. I was just reporting a few days ago down in Louisiana that these pipeline protesters have been arrested for these felony charges on something that wasn't even against the law. So now, and I said, and I said, when was it? Two days ago, guys. This is just the 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 opening salvo. That this little test case down there in Louisiana. And I say it, this is going to be the obvious next trick in their book is to criminalize uh, protesters. Wow. And here we have today from the uh, Guardian, <coughs> quote, treating protest as terrorism, <coughs> U.S. plans crackdown on Keystone activists. So if you're planning to uh, protest the Keystone Pipeline, you will be now labeled a terrorist. Documents suggest an aggressive response to any possible protest against the oil pipeline amid fears of another standing rock. Yep. Uh, so they're talking about these, these uh, protesters gearing up, but environmental catastrophe is not their most immediate threat. So the most immediate threat to anyone going up against these planet eater is, is that the federal government has characterized pipeline opponents as, quote, extremists and violent criminals and warned of potential terrorism, according to recently released records. The document suggests that police are organizing to launch an aggressive response to Keystone protest, echoing the actions against the Standing Rock movement in North Carolina. Uh, there you go, and you had better believe uh, you're going to see this cranking up. The proposed pipeline will carry a daily load of 800 30,000 barrels of dirty crude oil over 1,200 miles from the tar sands of Alberta, Canada, south to Montana, to South Dakota and Nebraska, uh, linking the pipeline to Texas refineries. The path will cross dozens of rivers and streams and run near a number of Native American reservations. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Wow. From the No Shed Sherlock uh, Department, glyphosate weed killers could be harming bees, warn scientist. No shit, Bees could be dying as a result of exposure to some of Britain's and everywhere else, not just Britain's, is some of the planet's most popular weed killers. New research suggests, yes, as scientists are have found evidence that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup and many other brands, may be contributing to the decline of honeybees. Yes, and coming from the good old University of Texas, right down this road for me, the study showed that worker bees exposed to glyphosate are, are losing beneficial gut bacteria that the, uh, the weed killer is killing the bacteria uh, that the honeybees, good God, mm, wow, good luck, scientist. Scientist 
voice opposition to weakening the U.S. Endangered Species Act. Huh. Thousands of scientists joined on Monday to accuse the Trump administration of trying to erode the Endangered Species Act in favor of commercial interest huh, with a plan to revamp regulations, meaning to gut the act that have formed a bedrock of U.S. wildlife protection for over 40 years. The extraordinary critique of the administration's proposal came in an open letter addressed to <clears throat> Horseman of the Apocalypse, Interior Secretary Ryan Zink, and Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross from three scientific associations representing 9,000 professional biologists. And if there is any professional biologist on this planet uh, that has any, any remote hope that the Trump administration gives a flying fuck about what 9,000 uh, biologists have to say about endangered species. Pull your head out of your over-educated ass. Okay, not sure who BIS is, but BIS warns global economy risks crisis relapse. This is the Bank of International Settlements. That sounds like a scary group. The Bank of International Settlements has said the global economy risked a relapse of the crisis that rocked it a decade ago, warning there was little medicine left to treat the patient a second time. So the, the BIS is considered the central bank for central banks. Warning, uh, okay, quoting BIS Chief Economist Claudio Borio, quote, things look rather fragile. No shit, sure. There is little left in the medicine chest to nurse the patient back to health or care for him in case of a relapse. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. Uh, anyway, pointed for instance to recent crises that have erupted in Argentina and, and Turkey. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, guys, Okay, from the global industrial economy to the shithole country, well I guess this is pretty much anywhere in Latin America, where we find secret gangs boil down forest jaguars for lucrative market in unproven Chinese medicines. Investigators exploring the plight of endangered jaguars have uncovered secretive networks of hunters, smugglers, and organized gangs involved in multi-million dollar trafficking chains leading to China. No shit, Sherlock. The big Cats are being tracked down in South America for their body parts to be illegally sold for a lucrative black market in traditional Asian medicine. As the animal's natural forest habitat is increasingly being destroyed by logging and mining, it becomes more visible and ever more susceptible to being stalked and poached pushing the jaguar nearer to extinction. Oh, shit, Sherlock. 
Okay, from Jaguars to Shark. It's to Sharks. Conservationist slam Australia's shark policy as more sharks killed. Conservationists on Monday slammed the baiting and killing of sharks at a popular Great Barrier Reef tourist spot after two swimmers were attacked, saying the policy was brutal and indiscriminate. Uh, so anyway, uh, these two people were bitten by sharks, and, and how do they respond? They just go on an all-out killing frenzy. They have no idea what sharks bit these people, so what are they going to do You know, for the PR, for the tourist industry? They're just going to start indiscriminately butchering any shark that comes near their precious tourist from the shithole country of uh, Australia to the shithole state of Georgia. Wow. The latest Georgia nuclear plant gets tentative okay. Huh. The nation's only major nuclear power plant under construction appears to be still alive after the owners voted to push forward despite another multi-billion dollar cost overrun. No shit, there you go. Oh, next. Okay. I, of course, I don't know who the, uh, who the Alert Tribes member uh, who sent this to me, you know, listening to me talking about looking for a job in the gig economy. Uh, why the gig economy may not be the workforce of the future. No shit, shut up. The gig economy just might not be the new frontier for America's workforce. After all, from Uber to Task Rabbit to your mechanic, so-called gig work has been widely seen as ideal for people who want the flexibility and independence that traditional jobs don't offer. Yet, the evidence is growing that over time, they do not deliver the financial returns that many expect. Uh, and they don't appear to be reshaping the workforce. Over the past two years, for example, pay for gig workers has dropped, yes, uh, by over one half for Uber drivers are making less than one half of what they were making two years ago from gig work to farm work. <clears throat> Only 60 years of farming left if soil degradation continues. Generating three centimeters of topsoil takes 1,000 years. If current rates of degradation continue, all, all of the world's topsoil could be gone within 60 years, a senior UN official said. There you go. No shit, shut up. A third, about a third of the world's topsoil has already been degraded. Did you realize that Friday was World Soil Day? The causes of soil destruction include chemical heavy farming techniques, deforestation, which increases erosion, and global warming. <clears throat> the earth under our feet is too often ignored by policy makers, experts said. Hmm. Unless new approaches are adopted, 
the global amount of arable and productive land per person in 2050 will be one-fourth of what it was in 1960. <clears throat> Not looking too good for Belgium's pigs this week as the European Union backs Belgium's preemptive swine fever slaughter. The European Union on Monday welcomed Belgium's decision to slaughter thousands of healthy pigs to isolate and eradicate an outbreak of swine fever. Uh, to head off the spread of the virus, Belgian authorities have set up an exclusion zone and have ordered the preventive slaughter of up to 4,000 pigs. What ignited many of California's worst wildfires still a mystery. Well, I thought we all knew what ignited many of California's worst wildfires were those directed energy machines. You know, I, I thought it was Dane Wigington making this claim, but somebody claims Dane never said that. But there's plenty of people claiming, uh, including my best friend, claiming that it is those pesky directed energy machines from the New World Order trying to depopulate us all uh, that are setting those fires. One uh, conspiracy theory is that they're trying to create enough smoke to actually blacken the entire Arctic. Uh, now, I mean, well, that would make it worse. So you got one theory that it's making it worse, and you got the other theory that what they're trying to do is put all this smoke in the air to increase global dimming. I'm getting my consp wacky conspiracy theory uh, mixed up. So what this article is saying, it's about 20% of wildfires are caused by lightning, is what they've discovered. And the other 80%, this big mystery, about 80% of wildfires are caused by the great mystery of humans. No shit, They're simply looking at all of the various human, the various ways that humans cause wildfires. That's the big mystery. There are so many ways to start a fucking wildfire, you do not need a directed energy machine. You need a match, you need brakes, you need bad brakes, you need power lines, uh, the list goes on. Uh, I'm sorry this article from Forbes magazine telling us how artificial intelligence is going to fuck civilization this century. I think we will figure that out on our own. What is uh, our old billionaire Save the Planet Prince William up to this week? Prince William visits Namibia on conservation tour. <coughs> yes. Oh, God. <laughs> good, old, uh, good old Prince William. How many how many kids does Prince William have now? Uh, anyway, moving on. Let's come over here to our, our great state of Texas. And guys, I have to admit, I, you know, I'm joining Willie Nelson, I mean, uh, in, in supporting this dude, Beto O'Rourke, uh, going up against Ted Cruz. Uh, good for Beto. I'm not registered to vote in Texas, so I can't vote for Beto. But I love this right here in Huff Post, being that this is a pro piece for Beto O'Rourke. So what? Where do you think Beto O'Rourke went right after debating Ted Cruz? He got in his gas-sucking car and drove to a what a burger? A what a burger is this Texas hamburger chain, and he worked up such an appetite. That our, that our alternative to Ted Cruz 
went to what a burger, and I think he, uh, I think he ordered a large cheeseburger. Uh, not sure if this was a double meat cheeseburger or not. So where do you think the alternative to Ted Cruz goes to eat? He goes and gets a big fucking cheeseburger with uh, Huff Post cheering him on. He's one of the people. What they're pointing out is that Beto is one of the people, and if you want to uh, show the clueless fucking moron lefties in Texas how you are one of the people, what the fuck are you going to do? You're going to go to Whataburger and get a goddamn cheeseburger and stuff your clueless fucking face with it so you can make yourself look like one of the fucking clueless moron cheeseburger eaters in Texas. Alright, what are those celebrities over to there in Milan, Italy? Celebrities gather on Milan's green carpet to promote sustainability. Italy's fashion elite and celebrities such as film stars Kate Blanchett, Julianne Moore, and Colin Firth gathered at a green carpet event on Sunday at Milan's Fashion Week to urge greater environmental sustainability in the global fashion industry. Last week, London's Fashion Week declared itself fur free for the first time. Good for them. What's going on in Connecticut? Home break ins by black bears surge in Connecticut suburbs. Yes, and it's not just uh, it's not just Connecticut, my God. Uh, the Catskill Mountains are crawling with these places. My my sister's house in Vermont. Bears have been encroaching on humans in record numbers this year uh, in Connecticut. There have been 24 reports of bears breaking into homes and businesses in Connecticut this year, well above the state's yearly average of about six. Uh, and you know, this, this woman in uh, New Hampshire was attacked in her kitchen by one. Anyway, what's going on with this good Samaritan in North Carolina who saved 25, I'm sorry, 27 dogs and cats. So this woman, she was in the process of, of building a, uh, a, a, a rescue facility anyway. She just hadn't received her permits, so before she got her permits, uh, for her facility, she ran out and rescued 27 dogs and cats from the rising floodwaters, got them to safety, and was promptly arrested for not having an animal rescue permit. She is out on $10,000 bail. This woman uh, posted $10,000 bail and I guess they're trying to get the governor to pardon her or starting a GoFundMe account. This is what you get if you're a good Samaritan. But uh, this one, guys, I just, uh, I, I, I really don't know what to say other than uh, just reading the headline, I am going to be declared a racist for reading this verbatim headline from Business Insider. <coughs> Take it away, Business Insider, to wrap up this rant about why we are so fucked. A basic income pilot in Mississippi will provide 15 single black mothers with $1,000 cash for free every month, and it could lead to a much bigger experiment. Hmm. Okay. Starting in December, 
a basic income pilot, pilot project in Jackson, Mississippi will give $1,000 per month to 15 black mothers and uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go way out on a limb here guys uh, way out on a limb here that these are single welfare mothers uh, taking a wild guess and researchers will analyze how the income affects the participants lives yes uh, I guess they already have a similar program in Stockton, California. Uh, let's see. Mississippi is the poorest state in the country. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, anyway, uh, it does not say imagine that whether how many of these women are already on welfare and how many of them are married uh, there you go 